Hello and welcome back to It Came From A Vlog. I'm Kate and today we are going to do five awesome freezer recipes. All of these recipes turned out absolutely amazing and I can't wait to share them with you. Plus, they are super budget friendly. Check out the end of the video where I break down the cost per serving on each recipe, mind blown. We have a sweet and spicy, super tender pulled pork, which you can shred and toss with your favorite barbecue sauce and it is divine. I also share a recipe for some really easy baked beans to go with the pulled pork as well as one of my favorite soups ever and the world's best lasagna recipe. You must try it. Then we have a delicious Sunday stew and a chicken pot pie. Comfort food at its best. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. Let's get started. To start off our freezer meals recipe, we're going to make Pioneer Woman's Dr. Pepper Spicy Pulled Pork. All that you need for this recipe is a pork butt or pork shoulders, two cans of Dr. Pepper, chipotle peppers with adobo, two onions, and some brown sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and make it here in my good old Dutch oven, and we're gonna cook it low and slow in the oven. We've quartered two onions, thrown them in the pot. Next up is to salt and pepper our pork and put it over it. Now we're gonna dump the chipotle peppers with adobo on top. We add the Dr. Pepper. Now four tablespoons of brown sugar. This is what it looks like right before it goes in. We're gonna put the lid on, pop it in the oven, and let it cook at 300 degrees for at least six hours till it's fall apart time. <laughs> oh wow, strong feelings. It has been two hours since we put the pork in and it is officially time to flip it. We're about one third of the way through the cooking time. It's still pretty pale. We definitely wanted to get richer and darker and more flavorful and much, much, much softer. Look at this, fresh out of the oven after six hours. It is fall apart tender. I'm gonna go ahead and shred this all up, package it for the freezer. Looks great. I am going to make some baked beans to go with our pulled pork. This is what I'm going to use. I'm using my mom's famous, famous in my book baked bean recipe. I love it because you just use the canned stuff but dress it up so it tastes homemade. It is legit. Kielbasa on top, if it will stay on top. I do think it might be a bit too wet, but you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. Here we have our beautiful pulled pork and our baked beans just came out of the oven as well. I definitely think I should have drained some of the liquid off of these guys because they are pretty wet, but I'm sure they'll be delicious. Oh, look at this little wayward bean. He's lost, how cute. Anyway, I'm gonna package these guys up, that's it. Next up, I'm going to be making a mulligatani soup. It's so good. I've made it before in the past and it's been a while and I'm excited to try it again. These are all the ingredients that we're going to need. It does call for cooked rice and some cooked chicken, but I am just gonna do some time savers and try to cook this before I move forward with the soup. And I'm just gonna cook the rice in the soup, adding extra broth so that when it absorbs it, everything balances out. At this point, I have cubed up some chicken, heated some olive oil. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in and cook it down. And because I absolutely will not do anything without seasoning, I'm going to add salt, pepper, and some curry powder, which is one of the base flavors of the soup. If you never had this soup before, it's basically a delicious uh, chicken and rice soup with curry. Now that the chicken looks pretty well done, and also keeping in mind that it is going to cook more in the soup, 
I'm just gonna take it out, put it in a bowl, and continue on with the base of this soup recipe. Just like all delicious soup recipes, this next part involves lots of chopping, so you have a flavorful base of your soup. But just to speed it up, because we're always short on time with the baby and all the children's, I'm gonna use this little guy to speed up the process. Right now I'm just preparing the onions, I'm gonna peel the carrots, get everything all chopped up and ready to go. So I threw the butter back into the pot where I cooked the chicken, and then I'm going to add in all of our chopped vegetables and saute them. I think I maybe doubled and a little bit more this recipe. It's quite honestly never enough. It's just such a good soup. I'm going to saute until they're soft before adding in the flour and the curry and allowing that to just cook and marry together for another five or six minutes. It calls for one and a half teaspoons of curry, but I'm definitely already doubling this recipe and I think I'm gonna hit it with even more than that because that's truly the source of the unique flavor of this soup. Now we cook this, it kind of forms into a thick, almost paste-like mix for five minutes, just making sure that it doesn't burn. Casually eating Reese's while cooking dinner. Also, surrounded by groceries that I have yet to put away. Real life. Next, we're gonna add the chicken stock. Add in the bouillon. Now that our soup has been simmering away for about 30 minutes, it is time to add the chicken. And we're also going to add some apple. The recipe does call for half a Granny Smith apple. I didn't have a Granny Smith, so I'm just using whatever apples we had. I also did one and a half because I actually love the apple. It's the unusual ingredient in this soup, but it just adds another element to this soup that makes it so unique. At this point, you usually add a quarter cup of cooked rice, but we're going to add half a cup of uncooked rice. I'm gonna give it a little taste, see how much salt and pepper we need if we need more curry powder. I'm also gonna add in some Italian seasoning. We need to give the rice some time to cook, so we're gonna give it at least 20, 25 minutes. Always taste along the way, see how the flavors are developing. Just realized I have a bunch of potatoes I wanna use up, so I'm gonna go ahead and add these in too. I think they're gonna be perfect in this soup. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. The potatoes are perfectly tender. Oh, I also had some shredded chicken in the fridge, which I went ahead and added in, and a bit more rice. So I'm just kind of fiddling about with it till it's perfect. I've tasted along the way, seasoned a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper, and it is just divine. So now I'm gonna take it off the heat and add the cream. Actually, I'm gonna keep it on the heat because I'm lazy. Ooh, she looks pretty. Mulgatani soup, yum, yum, yum. Look at how much soup this made, and that still will not be enough because it's so good. So apparently these no boiling required oven ready lasagna noodles, sometimes people do have to boil them. So what I'm gonna do since I have lots of time is just soak them in some water. Since they don't fit, I'll turn them around in a little bit. But we have a while while the sauce simmers to do this. 
Hopefully that'll soften them up so I don't need to boil them. So we're browning the meat, and at that point, you can definitely uh, drain off the fat. It does add flavor. Normally, I would drain off the fat, but to be honest, I am cooking one-handed. I'm holding the baby with my other hand, and I cannot drain this today. Now we're going to add in the sauce, paste, and the crushed tomatoes. We're gonna add a couple tablespoons of sugar. We're gonna let it simmer for one and a half hours, stirring occasionally. So beautiful. Has raw egg. We're gonna cover it with foil and I'm gonna give the foil a little spray with some cooking spray so it doesn't stick to the cheese. This is pretty much everything that you need for the next recipe, which is Pioneer Woman's Sunday Beef Stew. The recipe also includes ingredients and instructions to make your own mashed potatoes, which I normally do. But because I'm cooking so much today, I decided to just keep it simple and use the already made mashed potatoes and heat those up. This would be much better in my Dutch oven, but of course I'm already using my Dutch oven to make the sauce for the lasagna. So this pot it is. This pan is my least favorite because the coating, the nonstick coating has worn out a long time ago. And it is just the worst. Now you would add the beef broth. Since I'm doubling the recipe, I'm putting eight cups. And I'm not using stock, I'm just gonna make my own base with some beef bouillon. This is my absolute favorite bouillon and it's so flavorful. I saved so much money by buying this instead of buying so much broth for soups and stuff. Now we're just gonna stir, stir, stir till everything is well incorporated and smooth. Little Worcestershire and sugar. Let's add the beef back into the pot. And then it's going to simmer for an hour and a half before we add the vegetables. All right, our stew has been boiling away for an hour and a half, being stirred occasionally. Now we're gonna add in the carrots and turnips and let it cook for about 30 more minutes. And right as the oven preheats for our pot pies. It's my giant stack of cut turnips and carrots. Of course I use my Ninja Chopper. I know it's a little small, but this saves so much time. 100% worth it. 
Tasted the broth, it's perfect. I don't think it needs any salt and pepper at this point. So yummy. Got our finished lasagna in the background, looking so good. And I think this is everything we need for the chicken pot pie. I've got two crusts here, and then two crusts that I have for the top. And I'm gonna make the roux first. I'm gonna melt the butter and some flour, let it thicken up, maybe add an onion in or something like that, we'll see. I've got my Dutch oven washed up. Still has the remnants of all the delicious things I've cooked today. I'm gonna melt some butter. Cook out the flour. So we don't get that raw flour taste. They look pretty. Chicken pot pie. You guys, this is insane. This is only half of everything I made. This is just the half that I'm giving to my brother-in-law. So there's five complete recipes here, and I had double this, which I froze or we ate for my family. So we have baked beans and pulled pork. We have that with buns, so you can make a pulled pork sandwich with barbecue and baked beans. We have a Sunday stew, which is beef, turnips, carrots, onions, everything slow cooked, fall apart tender with mashed potatoes. You could totally make these yourself for cheaper, but honestly, this was such a budget friendly meal plan that why not? It saves me a lot of time. And I have bought one of these for him and two of these for us because we had so much stew. Then I have two containers of the soup, which we absolutely loved. My family already ate ours and we had the big, the big boy container. The pot pie just came out of the oven, so I haven't had a chance to uh, package that up yet, but it looks amazing. And then the lasagna, which is huge and I would say at least eight, 10 servings, I don't know, with the garlic bread. All together, you, you won't believe this. Imagine this times two. How much do you think that would cost? I'm about to blow your mind. <laughs> at least my mind's blown, I don't know. Because this doesn't taste like budget food, but it is. This whole thing cost $102. What? I went ahead and did the math on each recipe to see how much the ingredients were, how much the total was for that recipe, and then how much it costs per serving. So the pulled pork and baked bean with the, with the um, buns and everything all together cost $3 a serving. That was the highest one, by the way, the highest of them all. The stew is only $2.33 a serving. That's including everything, all the sides and everything. The soup, $1.60. The lasagna, $2.50. And the pot pie, only $1.04 a serving. Insane, my mind is blown. I have two of these, two of these, two of these, two, oh, what? It took two days to do all this. It was a lot of work. It was very labor intensive. But let me tell you the sense of accomplishment from this. Mm. I hope you enjoyed this freezer recipe video. Please stick around, give us a little like and subscribe. I've got lots of different videos for you guys to check out, including 
our latest family camping trip. We had a blast or spend the day with us Halloween edition. Plus I have some extra recipe videos including baking stuff and soon a crock pot video is coming your way. Love a crock pot recipe, love it. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Gosh, I hate adding things to soup. Don't splash me. It's a splash party. Sopa. Maybe less grunting. Once you take a picture of all that, it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's going on right now. <laughs> My goodness, babe, come look at this lasagna. You do too. Ugh.